that this year, for the first time, FAMEWAB has gone international. With the help of the British Council, it's spread to nine different countries in the southeast of Europe. They've all run Fame Labs, they've all had finals, and as part of their prizes, all nine winners are here with us tonight. They've also brought the heat with them. So please welcome to the stage, in strict alphabetical country order, I'm not fighting about this, from Austria, Robert Kripple. From Azerbaijan, Nija Aliyev. From Bulgaria, Rossen Ugrinov. From Croatia, Fran Supek. From Greece, Spiros Kitsinelis. From Israel, which technically isn't in Southeastern Europe, but is in Eurovision, so that's all counts, Mikhail Bekel. From Romania, Camilla Kira. From Serbia, Vladimir Zivkovic. And finally, from Turkey, Ozan Eren. Hello, I'm a mineralogist. Mineralogists are in fact material scientists that are studying crystal materials that do occur in nature. Minerals can exhibit a wide variety of different properties that can often be of technological use. My focus in my private science communication initiatives, as well as the primary reason for my participation in FAMELAB, was to elucidate this highly interesting connection between nature and technology. To give you a brief example, Scientists discover minerals in nature that get electrically charged when being heated. And very interesting property that is nowadays used in most modern motion detectors. So my key message is, we can really learn a lot from modern nature. Even from simple things like stones we can find when taking a walk. We just have to stay curious and pick them up. Thank you. Hello, I'm Nizad. Excuse me, I will wait, so my English is not so good. You probably had coffee this morning, and I'm sure you noticed that it always goes uh, cooler and never becomes hotter just sitting on your table. <laughs> Why not? It is explained by science thanks to the second law of thermodynamics, which says that energy can go only can go only flow in certain direction. Heat cannot pass from a colder body to a hotter body by itself. Ice melting in the water is another example for such processes. It would be absurd to see the water freezing when we put the ice in it. To understand what this law is, it would be interesting to imagine the world without it. In that world, it would be impossible for heat to transfer. No heat transfer means no work, no work means no life. Hi, probably you wondered when we will be able to plug a cable to ourselves and communicate directly with the computer. Well, the first step for this is done because we already know that in our brain, the information is transferred by electricity, and the rule that governs this electricity is similar to the rules that governs the electricity in the R channels. And the ion channels are the molecules that I really love to investigate. Well, now I should plug this back into me, but you know, sometimes in the scene it's not possible everything to be right, so, and then you will see something like showing there, but you know, you <laughs> never it works perfectly. that says here on the screen. It was uh, generated from a huge number of tiny molecular machines that are present in each and every one of us. Uh, they perform tasks like uh, enabling us to see, hear, move our muscles, breathe or digest food. They are called proteins. We are dependent on them for life. Uh, they are really tiny. Uh, if you remember that each one of us has a lot of cells. A lot is exactly uh, a thousand times more than there are people on the earth. And in each one of these cells, we have approximately an equal number uh, of these proteins. So it's really a huge, huge number of the tiny little robots. 
uh, you might imagine a robot as something having two arms and two legs and a head, but proteins do not have this. They are made as uh, long thing, uh, things, uh, something similar to spaghetti. And to be able to function normally, they need to fold properly into knots. So that's about it for me. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I told a Greek party two months ago. You are all drug addicts. Of course, I'm referring to caffeine. You see this is neurotransmitter in our body, it's called adenosine. Uh, it locks the nerve cells, closes them down, slows them down so we can go to sleep. Now, caffeine and adenosine are different molecules, but the part that locks is identical to both. So caffeine steals the job of adenosine when we introduce it to our bodies. It's not supposed to be in our bodies, it's out there in nature. So we close the nerve cells, but we don't go to sleep, we don't relax. So the brain gets confused and it prepares the body for fight or flight because it thinks there's some external threat. So it rushes off the adrenaline, the biggest weapon of the human body. That's what gives you the alertness. It's not the caffeine, it's the consequence of caffeine. So, i.e. the adrenaline. Of course, you will wear off, you get back tired again, so what do you do? You order a cup of coffee. And the cycle of addiction goes on. Well, up until recently, we thought we did, but scientists discovered otherwise. Meet Kaguya, a mouse conceived with other sperm. An embryo is created from a sperm and an egg, each containing health of the genetic material. The scientists challenged nature by trying to create an embryo from two eggs. The barrier was a phenomenon called imprinting, in which different genes are chemically blocked and therefore inactivated. Genes that are inactivated in the sperm are activated in the egg and vice versa. So when joining two eggs, the genes do not form and hold. By using genetic manipulations, the scientists succeeded in overcoming this barrier and a healthy mouse was born, named Kaguya, which later gave birth to healthy offspring herself. We still have a long way to go before creating human embryos without sperm, so guys, don't worry, we still need you. <laughs> change our life. Imagine that you have a personal agent integrated into your computer able to organize all your emails and understand their content. For example, it could read that uh, you've been invited to an important festival and organize all the travel for you. Or <laughs> imagine that you could have agents integrated into your house. For example, I could communicate to my home agent from here and ask for a cup of coffee and why not the hot pot by the time I get home tomorrow after a long flight from London to Romania. Um, I really love that and I don't think it will change my lifestyle that much. <laughs> uh, I will have to warn you that my subject is rather dark because I come from the field of forensic medicine. So the story starts in 1946 when <laughs> American radiologist Kathy uh, described six cases of children presented with a form of intracranial hemorrhage and long bone fractures. He thought he discovered a new disease, but he could find no explanation for what was later known as Kathy syndrome and then better child syndrome, and today is known as syndrome of child abuse and neglect. It is deliberate, fatal or non-fatal repeated injury of a child by a person who has carried it. I will make the story lighter. Kathy eventually got his own disease. Thank you very much. I studied my lesson. Uh, I was uh, from Turkey and I am a physics teacher at a high school. I teach physics. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I present my uh, my presentation is about optical illusion, but first of all, I want to say something. Uh, what changed in my life and in Turkey after the, the fame lab? Um, the fame lab made us think to how we can make the science simply and amazing. Uh, after the program, there are lots of programs like this fame lab. Uh, for example, with the Turkey inventor. So, uh, fame lab changed lots of things about the thinking science. Uh, there are lots of teaching teacher like me uh, and now 
they think how we can say the science from a uh, math equation and how we, we can make it simple and for this uh, thank you for all things everybody.